fortunately, our office had um, really been working. Uh, we were all set up to work remotely prior to the pandemic. So when we had to, uh, you know, all begin to work from home, it wasn't a big change for us because we all already had that ability to do that. So there was um, some, some adjustments, some people who were not um, as into it as others. Um, you know, we had to make some adjustments, but for the most part, it was a pretty easy change for us. And actually, you know, other than that, um, you know, I think things were going fairly smoothly. Yeah, as Peter said, we hit the ground running pretty well. Uh, I have to say, we weren't 100% productivity because people were dealing with kind of the logistics of uh, possibly working from home consistently. But uh, we were really able to kind of work seamlessly with each other, collaborate with our clients. We even had a couple of virtual interviews with um, for a few projects. Uh, about halfway through phase two, we were able to kind of move back into our office. We also had the kind of luxury of enough real estate to spread out in our office and still maintain um, kind of a safe distance from each other. We, of course, had to implement health protocols in the office to, you know, when we're meeting directly together or kind of moving around the office wearing our masks. But um, I think it was a good combination of being able to kind of be back in our space, but maintain our flexibility to be able to work from home or at or from the office seamlessly. We're working on a, a fun um, commercial project down in Sarasota, Florida. Uh, it's two buildings, they're mirror images of each other. And it's fun to be working out of state on, um, on something. Uh, it's one of these uh, sort of traditional neighborhood developments um, and so that's a, a fun project. We just finished up a couple of really nice uh, homes here in New Orleans, one in the Garden District and one in um, Old Metairie. Um, we've been working on a few uh, master plans. Uh, we've been working with Trinity uh, Church and School on theirs. Um, and I'll let Paul elaborate on that a little bit more. So something exciting that we're working on, we are working on a kind of a cool boutique project that uh, we've had a relationship with Son of a Saint for a while. And uh, recently they purchased the building they were in, which is the old ice house and um, trumpet co-working space uh, that they actually are going to take over for their entire facility. And so their mission is really inspiring. They, they work for um, mentorship and kind of partnership with uh, young boys that for whatever reason don't have fathers. Anyway, uh, their new facility is gonna kind of kick in and enable them to do all their programming in one space. And so they asked us to help them design. Um, they just used to have a few offices in the building and now they're gonna take over the whole building to implement all of their uh, programs and services. So it's a really great opportunity to kind of reinvent uh, how kind of an office workspace could be transformed to this semi-educational, semi-counseling, semi-social uh, place for the boys and uh, get a little creative with the space. So it's been fun. Best professional advice I ever received was to take a chance and start my own business. Um, and it was from a contractor who said, you know, what's the worst that can happen? You know, either you fall down and you, you'll just get right back up and you can always go work with someone else. But the best thing that can happen is you're going to succeed at what you do. And, and I think that was really the best professional advice that I've received um, in my career, which is why I'm where I am today, um, because I took that chance when I was pretty young. I was 26 when I started the firm. Um, and uh, I think one of the uh, second best things uh, uh, professional advice I had was to get a business manager because I was really stressed out at the time um, and trying to do too much uh, and that really relieved a lot of pressure on me and then uh, I'd say the third thing was partnering with Paul um, she's been a great partner all these years and has been a, a you know great boon to the business in, in running it successfully and that kind of ties into my answer 
to that question is um, a colleague of mine said, you know, life's too short and architecture is pretty complex if you're not doing what you love to do. And so align yourself with clients that want to do the type of projects you do, partners that want that do the type of work you want to do, and then you can really kind of dig in and make a difference. And I, I feel like that advice early in my career is uh, helped me make all the important decisions in my career along the way, and then it helps us partner with the right people uh, in our business today in, in the firm. I, I would say what motivates me is I like creating um, nice environments for people to live. Um, and I think, you know, Paula stated it pretty well just a minute ago. Um, you know, it's something that, you know, I really enjoy doing. Um, and I've been very fortunate. I've thought many times over the years, what would I do if it wasn't architecture? And I have to say that I think I made the right choice. Um, I, I enjoy designing space. Um, and, you know, I, I don't know, it's just been a, a, a very satisfying career for me. I agree with Peter on that one. Um, I think what we do and being able to design places for people to live or work or play uh, is very impactful and so you know besides being fun and creative uh you know I, it is impactful on how someone experiences that place how someone lives in their home how someone learns in their school and just kind of seeing that go from a thought to reality is is a pretty powerful thing and uh brings a little bit of res a lot of responsibility along with it but, but uh it's something you can really be proud of makes it worth doing. <laughs> I just finished binge watching um, Schitt's Creek, <laughs> which I really enjoyed. I uh, started watching it several weeks ago and was thrilled to see that it won so many Emmys. Um, I think it was well, well deserved. Um, so that, that's, uh, that's what I've been watching. Um, and I haven't really started anything uh, new yet, uh, but <laughs> so. Uh, but if if, any, if anyone hasn't watched it, it's it, it's a fun fun series. I just started watching The Boys, um, which is a <clears throat> kind of a superhero, a dysfunctional superhero kind of drama, and. Uh, Anyway, I don't know how it's going to play out. It's a little, it's a little bit of a revenge story, which is not my favorite type of thing. But uh, it's interesting seeing how the characters develop with each other, um, and sometimes not exactly working with each other. But uh, anyway, that's kind of the newest thing I'm watching. I'm reading the, the Color of Law right now uh, with the New Orleans Architecture Foundation. We have a kind of a book club going to kind of learn a little bit more about uh, kind of redlining practices that maybe disenfranchise large groups of people uh, from a zoning policy standpoint over the over the years and see talking about and discussing how some of those things are still in effect today um, whether it's maybe it's not technically called redlining anymore but the way that financial institutions kind of evaluate mortgages uh, has some of the same type of inequity built into the system and so it's it's been an interesting read and an interesting kind of conversations coming out of it so about halfway through <laughs> <laughs>